Hello everyone, this is Kim with Abundant Life Tarot and we are doing our December monthly astro uh, tarot and oracle readings for all 12 signs. And yay, we made it. It's to December. We are looking at the overall overarching energies that will be um, affecting our December and how we can work best with those energies. The deck that I'm going to be using as my main course is the Celtic Tarot. And uh, we'll be letting the Mildred Payne have a little rest for a moment. And um, again, this will just be a focus mostly on, lo not love, but life. If we see some things come up in the tarot about love, I'll mention it. But I'm moving towards having general readings here on YouTube and then on my website. You'll be able to get more um, specifics for your signs. Like for monthlies, it'll be uh, monthly uh, love readings for, you know, Aries. Or, you know, maybe uh, the Cancers are interested in uh, their career readings for the month. So it's going to be um, more going on my website with regards to the specific sign, like, um, categories. But for a general reading, for all the all that we're doing right here, right now is um, our life reading and that's more than enough to discuss as we know all right you all i have time stamped them like i usually do so just check out the description box for your sign or maybe your lover sign or your relative or friend sign or check out your moon sign or your rising sign to get a more complete um, picture with your sun sign so i hope you enjoy this I wish you so much love, so many blessings. Oh, before I go, I also want to say a big sorry and a big thank you to my Pisces, Scorpios, and Cancers, um, where I was having some terrible issues with my microphone for the November readings. And you all so kindly let me know that the sound was not on, on point, and I re-recorded them. So I just want to thank you for letting me know. Thank you for your patience and thank you for watching these videos. So sending you so much love, many blessings. And yeah, I'll see you all in the next video. What's up Capricorns? This is your monthly uh, December tarot and oracle reading and life, love, and abundance. So let's just dive right on in, shall we? We're going to first look at the overall overarching energies that you will be experiencing in the month of December. So for Capricorn Spirit, what overarching overall energies will they be experiencing in the month of December. I hope I didn't say January. I've got January on the brain. This is a December reading. So your December reading. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So the cards that came up were secrets, legacy. Enchantment and nostalgia. Interesting cards, Capricorn. So we'll stick these over here for now. I'm going to lay out all the cards and then do the reading at once. So I hope you've got a nice, good beverage to sip on so you can relax, kick back as I shuffle the cards and then read them. Let's take a look now at... The spread we're going to do for Capricorn. So for Capricorns for the month of December and life, love, or abundance, what will be, what will Capricorns be confronting? But what do they need to confront in the month of December? We have Justice, Five of Swords, Pentacles, hmm. Five of 
those shields. Okay. All right. What tools will Capricorns be utilizing in the month of December? Or what tools should they? And what tools? Not too many. What tools should they be? And will they? Okay, we got the hanged man, the page of cauldrons, traditionally the page of cups. What tools? Well, extra tools. Will of Fortune. The Fool. Nice. Nice full card. The Queen of Swords. You've got quite a lot of tools to help navigate this month for you. See a couple of bumps along the way here in terms of your reading, but I think you're going to have some great overall overarching energies that you'll be able to work through just fine. What are the outcome cards for, for Capricorns in the month of December in life, love, or abundance? What will Capricorns be leaving behind in December and what will they be taking forth with them into January? What are the takeaway cards here? Or take away or leave them cards. <laughs> we have Ace of Cauldrons. Nice. Hmm. Takeaways for the month of December for Capricorns. The Druid, which is traditionally the Hierophant. Four of Swords. And Knight of Cauldrons. Okay. What do Capricorns need to surrender? And Surrender to wonder and awe. Just so many other messages. Surrender to silence. Hmm. All right. Thank you, Spirit. And then finally, we are going to close with a message. New Spirit to Capricorns. Tying up all the messages here in a way that we can succinctly understand everything. Thank you, Spirit. We've got nourishment. We'll tie this into the reading, but we will also read from the guidebook on that deck as, it, as I'm getting to know this lovely little deck. Please excuse my slurping. I'm so thirsty and I'm sipping on my tea or slurping it rather. It's rude. Okay, so let's dive in Capricorns. So we've got secrets, legacy, enchantment, and nostalgia coming up for you. And so in the month of December, there's secrets that may be plaguing you, secrets that may be revealed finally. Um, it could be on a grander scale like uh, secrets being revealed in December in the greater community and society in your country even. Um, it also could deal with secrets um, that maybe you've been holding or maybe someone's been holding from you. Nevertheless, secrets could very well be revealed this month. So just, you know, try to go with the flow as best you can. Um, if you are the one withholding secrets, know that you can't hold them on forever. And you have to look at and weigh if it's really worth holding it in. Sometimes it is, you know, if we're to be honest. And then there's oftentimes that it's not. 
So you have to take a look at all of that. Um, legacy, which is an interesting card, right? When I think of legacy, I think of leaving something behind for your kids, leaving um, a lasting impression on someone or your family on or on society at large. So it's important to you this month in December to feel like you are working towards leaving a powerful legacy for your loved ones or just wanting to leave a legacy for the world. And, you know, you're surrendering to the awe, wonder and awe. It says, open to the magic of every moment and sense the awe and wonder in all of life. This attitude will keep you connected to the ecstasy of flow. And I actually, when I read this, I get it. I get a sense that it's tying here to the enchantment and the nostalgia card. But we'll get into that in just a moment. The legacy, though, is, is super important to you for, you know, you to be able to leave behind something valuable for your family. So you've been really pondering that. Maybe open enrollment benefits came up. And you've been really thinking about life insurance and you've been thinking about certain things of leaving something behind for your loved ones. Um, you think about nourishment, about nourishing their spirits, nourishing um, their ability to be able to take care of themselves. You've been feeling nourished, therefore you want to share that. So that's, um, that's an interesting energy that you'll be working through. We have enchantment, like I've mentioned before, um, where it could be the signal of new relationships that have started blossoming in your life and you're enchanted with what's going on. You could be enchanted with the holidays coming up. You could be enchanted with, um, with your spouse or significant other or with, you know, the life you're creating for yourself. Or perhaps, you know, you're a single parent and you're enchanted with your children and, you know, in moments, quite a few moments this month. So, and you're also feeling quite nostalgic. Um, you know, maybe old relationships are popping up, whether it's friendships or old love relationships for those who are single. Um, some are just having nostalgic moments with coworkers laughing about old times at work while others are thinking about nostalgic uh, times at Christmas. Um, so nostalgia is a big time of year. You might be able to even catch up with some old friends this coming month. And that's going to feel really good to your soul. Um, yeah. And we have surrender to silence. It says, in quiet meditation or contemplation, let go and enter the stillness within. Silence can heal and replenish you. Okay. Now we're going to go and take a look at the spread here. So we have the justice card as the at the onset of December for Capricorns. And it's sitting next to the five of swords and on top of the hanged man. And of course, in the tools position is saying, hey, you may want to take a, a new look at this, have a new perspective on this um, because you may be a little, you may be seeking out justice and fairness, but in actuality, are you really getting that? Um, so with it sitting next to the five of swords, that tells me, and then we also have the five of pentacles in the reading as well. You're probably feeling towards the end of the month here with the five of pentacles, like you're feeling a little uh, put out and put upon um, unexpected bills came up in addition to you buying a lot of gifts for the holidays and food. And, um, so you're feeling a little, um, feeling like you are going to feel left out because you're not able to do all that you'd like to do for the holidays. While others of you, um, you just maybe feel left out, you know, of family affairs, maybe for whatever reason, you're just, you didn't get the invite to whatever, you know, event is going on. And that doesn't feel so great. Um, but then I get a sense that you're going to turn that around with the tools position, um, as we'll discuss in a moment. The five of swords is coming about because it seems like there's some conflict. So for those of you who wanted to, for example, set a legacy for your children 
and you recently got into an argument with your parents about whether or not they've, you know, set out a will or if they've ironed out their details and they have not, or maybe they said they have and they don't really give you much other details, or perhaps if they tell you that it's a sibling that they have in mind to be the executor, for example. It's causing you some conflict internally and with them and you feeling like, you know, they, they, basically in the battle they won they have the upper hand and you're just kind of at their mercy and it's it, you know that's just one example that's not to be mean that everyone is experiencing that for themselves but it's got you thinking about what you want to be able to leave behind for your kid or kids um, you're thinking long term um, like big goal, big life goals, big life planning is happening in December as you enter into your birthday time, as well as the new year. You have the King of Shields, which tells me that with the King of Shields, you again are, you know, working towards leaving a really strong legacy. The King of Shields knows that it takes a long time to get that done. So it's a lot, it's for many times when you're dealing with pinnacles energy, especially um, the pinnacles, uh, the king of pinnacles. When you're dealing with this energy, it's very slow moving. So to get to that place of legacy status, it's going, it takes years at times. So spirit is inviting you to temper yourself, to, to just surrender to silence when you start to get a little frantic, like you wish you were further along in life. It's time to get back to silence. Listen to this part of the video again because that's some great uh, tips for you. And so in terms of overall for December for you, um, there's some inner conflicts going on. There could be some external conflicts going where you may be feeling left out or you may be feeling attacked upon or not or being heard or just you know the, the you fight you feel like you're fighting a losing battle and the other person just always has the upper hand so you just want some fairness and you desire fairness is really big to you um perhaps um there were secrets again i don't know why i keep i feel like somebody who's maybe watching this is dealing with something like this but there may have been secrets that example i used earlier there could be secrets with what the parent has really who they really have left for what you know what for what or what for who I should say and you just want fairness you want it to be just and and you're hoping you get that ultimately you will but it's not going to be in the month of probably December that resolution of that issue is not going to happen right then and there we have the tools position so we have the hanged man having an, just Gaining a new insight, new perspective into how to approach things is, is huge for you. It's great advice. It also kind of ties into surrender to the silence, where it's saying in quiet meditation or contemplation, like go and enter the stillness within. Silence can heal and replenish you. And so I love that with the hanged man because this person is just chilling, just hanging, just kind of surrendering to you know, to silence and to um, meditation and contemplation is quite beautiful. And it is definitely an energy that will help you gain a new perspective over whatever the situation is bothering you. We have the page of cauldrons, which um, is saying, hey, be open to the new beginnings that's coming to you in the areas of love because they are coming to you as we see Throughout the reading, we have the Page of Cups, we have the Ace of Cups, and then we have the Knight of Cups. So definitely you're going to be receiving new beginnings of love opportunities if you are single. So yay, that's awesome. Surrender to the Wander and Awe. Did we read this? It says, open to the magic of every moment and sense the awe and wonder in all of life. This attitude will keep you connected to the ecstasy of flow. So keep that in mind as you flirt, as you open yourself to being in love and gaining love. Um, so being open to love, being ready for that new love to come in, is going to be a powerful tool to help you um, 
attract and keep love. The Wheel of Fortune is saying that tides are a turning. You know, you were once in a situation of lack or feeling like you didn't have enough. Feeling like, you know, everyone may have been out to get you. And now this tide is turning and you're starting to feel empowered. So go with that. The wheel doesn't have to just talk about what we're behind at and what we're not doing well. The wheel turns, the wheel of fortune, and it says, okay, now we're in a new territory. Now we've got more learning to do. So just being able to go with the flow. Also being able to take a leap of faith and just do it. Whatever the question mark is in your life, take that fool's leap and see what happens and go for it because that's a powerful tool to have. And yeah, there may be some risk in doing what you're trying to do, but in the end, it's going to be worthwhile, um, I think. We have the Queen of Swords sitting next to it, which assures success. She is experienced. She's gone through some things. She's wise. You're wise. So you will be able to really read pe through people's BS this month. That's going to be a tool that you are able to utilize and navigate quickly as you um, are doing your regular job, as you go doing your life. You don't have time to be bogged down. And so the Queen of Swords recognizes that she cuts things down to size and she keeps it real and she gets the real from folks. She's no nonsense. And she, um, as far as like sitting next to the full card, she assures that there will be success, but it will come after she has been open to receiving advice about how to approach something. The outcome cards, we have the Ace of Cups. So again, like I said, this is really amplifying, saying that you'll have new beginnings in love. If you're in a current relationship, um, it could definitely um, say that, you know, you've got this renewed sense of love and connection to your partner. Um, it could also say for those who are um, maybe starting out dating and then you meet someone, that this card is saying that that meeting is happening in December. And so that's beautiful. And that's energy that you will be receiving in December and then moving forth into uh, January and beyond. Um, we have the Druid. Some of you will actually literally be going back to church. It helps you feel nostalgic, maybe going to church with family members. Some of you will be making the decision to go back to school um, where you're like, You've been hemming and hawing about it, and now in December you've made a decision. While others are becoming more disciplined, more having a uh, discipline in terms of bringing more exercise into their life, bringing more budgeting, and being a little bit more by the book and trying to toe the line. Um, it seems to help, and it is an energy that spawned in December and may linger for a little while in the months following. We have Four of Swords. And for some of you, this means that you're actually going to be like going on a vacation or you're um, going to be taking off a few days to get some rest. While others of you, this could mean that you may fall ill and actually get sick. Um, so it's important, important, important this month to take care of yourself. Some of you have small children, so you, you can't help it you take, but to get sick, but just try to get as much rest as you can. Try to meditate. Try to keep a light heart. Um, it seems that you've got the energies around you to do so. I mean, these overarching energies mean that these are energies for you to tap into at any time in the month and really be able to say, okay, I'm feeling enchantment right now. What does that mean to me, you know? And then we have the Knight of Cauldrons. This is about movement towards, and you know, a good gallop towards love and towards emotional fulfillment and towards moving uh, in the direction that you're trying to go to in love if that's where you're trying to go moving in the direction of trying to have your soul fed um, just it's such a, a beautiful reading because it's saying you know don't be the person who's forced to get a cold 
Be the person who goes on vacation and meets a potential knight of cups who's ready to sweep you off your feet. Or she is embodying the knight of cups energy and ready to sweep you off your feet. So you just have to be aware, really listen to your body. Your body will give you clues about what nourishment it's going to need this month. And it's going to need quite a bit because you've got a lot going on, Capricorns. You do. Um, nourishment. Let's take a look at the guidebook here. Let's see. The affirmation is I choose to nourish myself. And then the little quick message here is choose to nourish your mind, body, and spirit. Feed your values. When you are jealous or envious, it is a sign of what you are actually hungering for. Pay attention to your health. And I'm going to say this month, pay attention closely to your health. You may have to go and get some tests, go to the doc um, and see what's going on. And, you know, and see why you're not feeling well. So that could be, you know, when I see the Druid, I think of different institutions. And so seeing this um, next to the Four of Swords, I get a sense of maybe some going to the doctor. Um, trying to see what excerpt I want to read. All right, so it says, all of us have a set of values that are as individual as our fingerprints. Sometimes we aren't sure what they might be if asked, but unconsciously we know. How do we know? Because if our values are not being met or lived, we rebel. We get angry, sad, depressed, irritable, or stuck, or we take the chaotic choice in our decision making, and commonly our relationships and life are not harmonious. An example of this might be someone who has a strong value of honesty being asked to manipulate the truth every day in a sales job, or someone who highly values peace being surrounded by loud, drama-filled people who are just the opposite of peaceful. Meeting our values and living by them is a sure way to nourish our being. We feel more complete and fulfilled if we are able to do that. Additionally, it probably isn't an exaggeration to say that the Western world is obsessed by food for the wrong reasons. Food is often used as pain relief, with many people overeating due to anxiety or pain. Food becomes a diversion rather than something that is nourishing or even simply enjoyable. Learning to nourish bodies purely to give them what they really need is a key to mental and physical health. In other words, to consider, you know, reconsider your relationship with food, what you're eating, how you're eating, when you're eating, all of those things. Look at that and really see, are you getting the nourishment that you need? And that could also mean are you getting it spiritually and mentally as well? And speak up if you are not. All right, my dears, well, I've gone on long enough. Thank you so much for watching Capricorns. Much love, many blessings. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye. Hello Aquarians, we are doing your December monthly um, tarot and oracle life, love, and abundance reading. Oh, that's a mouthful. So let's just get right on into it, shall we? We're going to first look at the overall overarching energies for our Aquarian friends. What's happening in December and the overall overarching energies for Aquarius. Okay. We've got discernment, transformation, renewal, trust came before renewal, but trust, Renewal. We'll read all the cards together in just a moment. Let's take a look at the tarot. All right, 
Spirit for Aquarius for the month of December? What will they be confronting or what should they be confronting? And life, love, or abundance. We have Seven of Shields. Three of Swords. Confronting and the month of December and the month of abundance. Seven of Cauldrons. Alright, what tools will Aquarians be utilizing in the month of December? We've got the Ace of Shields. Nice. Okay, we've got all the cards that came. Ten of Cauldrons. Gorgeous. The Hanged Man, and remember these are tools in the tools position, and the Tower. Oh. And let's see outcome cards. What's, what will be happening for the ending of December? And what will Aquarians be leaving behind in December or taking with them into January and beyond? And we have Seven of Wands, so we'll take a look what energies it is what are the concluding cards what does the end of the month look like even uh, take all information spirit thank you There's the outcome okay we've got seven of wands five of wands huh. December, surrender stress. Anything else? <laughs> surrender fear. Wow. Okay. And then a closing message from Spirit to Aquarian to tie up all these messages here that Spirit has given us. I'll tie this into the reading, but I will also read from the guidebook because I really enjoy reading from the guidebook for this deck. All right, Aquarius, let's take a look at your overall overarching energies. We have discernment, transformation, trust, and renewal. And underneath that, we have surrender, stress, surrender, fear, and beauty. And then we have these interesting cards over here. So in the month of December, we have you really having to get really comfortable with some discernment this month. Discerning what's really worth your energy and time, what's really not, what's really a worthy cause to fight for, what, what's not. Um, 
w doing things that really matter to you versus letting certain things go. You are having to be quite discerning this month and even having to maybe cut off certain friendships or take breaks from certain friendships and relationships because you've got big things happening and growing in your life and it's taking all of your energy. And so you have to save some energy for yourself, for your family. And so you have to be discerning of your energy and time. And that's what this energy, this card is saying about the energies for you. We have transformation. You are in immense transformation right now, Aquarius, uh, both personally and professionally. And spirit, or I guess not both, I guess three, spiritually, uh, physically, and emotionally. I mean, I don't know, it could be, I mean, it could be more than that, but. Nevertheless, you're going through some radical changes. Um, your business, if you have a business, may be changing or um, maybe there's transformation happening in your relationship. It's uh, maybe coming to an end as we see with the Three of Swords. Maybe there's some, um, or maybe it's just some betrayal and you guys are able to transform from this. So we'll look at that. Um, we have trust. Trust that everything is unfolding as it should be and needs to be. Trust that you are the right person for the job. Trust that everything is happening for a reason. Trust that even the stress that you're feeling that you're about to surrender serves a purpose and it's letting you, it's giving you information on how you can reach your renewal. This is a beautiful card because, um, it's sitting next to trust and it's saying that once you've surrendered to trust, um, it, which it seems that you will, that a, renew, a sense of renewal is going to wash over you and that's going to feel good and it's going to sustain you for a while. All right, so we'll take a look here at these cards in a moment. I'm called to read the tarot first and then take a look at these cards. So we have the Seven of Shields. So at the start of the month, you are looking out at the at the uh, Pentacles energy and trying to assess where you are, where you're going, and if you should continue to go. And that's what the Seven of Pentacles is about, just kind of that assessing point. And the answer is yes, you need to keep going. You are in the midst of transformation, Aquarius. So it's time to trust the process and keep going, even amidst, amid, you know, amid disappointments, even when things um, where you feel even betrayed, maybe by a client or a friend or a partner or a colleague, you still need to pick up the pieces and go. Karma and justice happen in its own timing, not your divine timing, no matter how much you want to will it. How much you want it to happen you again you need to get back to that trust of the universe responding in kind to what you're trying to manifest and then believe it to be true and then over time that's how you cultivate the manifestational powers so justice is saying this week as far as like what you're confronting is strike it's you trying to strike that balance you trying to strike that fair balance with everything that's going on and this card seems to affirm that oh like as the month closes like this is like the third week or so as as the month closes you will start to feel like you're getting your schedule is not as rigid and tight and causing stress um and then we have seven of cauldrons uh, this is the, I'm being picky and I maybe want this or this or this or that. And I'm just like weighing my options, my, you know, of what will bring me emotional fulfillment. And I'm just going to take my time choosing is kind of the energies I'm getting from you in terms of December, in terms for some of you of dating. Uh, while others, this could be off job offers. This could be because job offers could also with okay, cups is yes, typically associated with love and and particularly romantic love, but it also you can have emotional fulfillment from your jobs, and so um, that definitely could be a possibility. While others may have different options, 
in terms of job offers or suitors. So, I mean, you're going to be exploring different things, different ways of how you can renew, how you can feel renewed. Um, you may be on a budget, and so you're thinking of different ways to retreat next year. You're exploring all your different options, and it's beautiful. The tools that you have, Aquarius, is Ace of Shields. So Ace of Pentacles, new beginnings in your resources, in your materials, in your career house, your home. Some of you are actually will be moving or planning, seriously planning to move. Um, some of you are setting out um, new businesses and really having some success um, this year, really able to start to see the spark of success happening for you. And yes, it's a long haul. This will be no easy journey that you're embarking on. It is never the well exciting and a worthwhile thing to pursue. We have the Ten of Cups, which is the epitome of ultimate fulfillment, where emotional fulfillment, I should say, you feel con contentment, you feel connected, you feel love, you feel secure. Um, you feel like you could start a family with this person. This is your partner. And this is a beautiful thing to usher into your heart space. You need this. You need to be renewed by this Ten of Cups energy, Aquarius. Lately, even your optimistic rebel self has been starting to become a little fearful, a little stressed, and not able to see the beauty in the mundane things. When you're not able to see and be grateful for the little beauty of the little mundane things, it's time to look at why is that? What's happening there? And you are gaining a new perspective or invited to gain a new perspective because this card definitely... Um, it just brings up different things of how you can, I mean, you're, there's a river running next to this person and this person is either giving information to the tree or receiving information, downloading or uploading information to this tree. And yeah, it helps to have a new perspective and that's a powerful tools position. And then we have the tower, you know, things just never the same again. In terms of you making, you know, I always look at the adjacent cards. In terms of you making a choice, it's a like, okay, this is a no turning back choice that you're making. And you're a little fearful about how it will be received. This card is in the tools position, which says the the, tar, the um, tower energy is going to happen anyway. So it's best to soften that blow by following some advice here that they have. It says, surrender stress. Take a few deep breaths and exhale the tension you've built up in your body. Let the stress go as you come back to your center. And then surrender fear. Let go of the fearful stories you are telling yourself. Stay in the moment. Focus on solutions and celebrate every baby step forward. Hmm. So now we're moving into the outcome cards. What's the takeaways here? We have seven of wands. You know, this is the defend to the end card where you're defending your passions and having to choose between uh, really wanting to do your passion job and really having to try to strike a balance on uh, your other job. If you have another full-time job or your family, Everyone is calling at you and you are having to defend your position of trying to be a creative content creator, I should say. And yeah, there will be some tug of wars there. There will be some betrayed feelings, some feelings that, you know, people don't really get you or understand you. Five of Wands shows um, there's some level of competition or conflict going on. Maybe conflict you don't even realize, but it's going on around you and you'll start to see symptoms of it soon. So in terms of, yeah, you, there's just going to be maybe some some competition, like someone or something or some people or some, it just feels like there's a certain level of competition there and, and maybe it's even causing some fears for you and 
you just don't need to worry about it because it really is nothing to worry about. It says, let go of the fearful stories you are telling yourself. Stay in the moment. Focus on solutions and celebrate every baby step. Okay. Oh, renewal. She's coming out of the water. She's refreshed. She's got a little fish. She's the page of cauldrons, new beginnings, transformation. This one, she's transforming and into a it bringing news of transformation and transforming into a goddess or a god who is able to receive love. Some of you are able to really just relish in the beauty of your life, relish in the beauty of your relationships, finally able to really trust by the end of the month. And this is the energies you're going to be taking forth into January and beyond in terms of Seven of Wands and Five of Wands energy. I don't know if you're taking that energy on into um, January and beyond Aquarians, but what you can take on and what you should maybe consider releasing is always feeling like you have to be on the defensive of pursuing your passion or you, what you wish to create. It's, it's no longer up for debate anymore. You don't have to fear other people um, not understanding where you're coming from and not understanding why you're doing X, Y, and Z. You just need to do what you need to do and move forward. And then finally, that's where the Queen of Swords advice comes in as well. That's what she's about. She's like, she's all about, you know, being no nonsense, this one, this Queen of Swords. You know, she's, or this Queen, I should say. She is, you know, clear about thoughts. She is the nurturer of of bringing in new thoughts, bringing in new ideas, bringing in, you know, and listening to your intuition and your instincts and saying, you know what, I need to do X, Y, and Z. I need to eliminate this. I need to be discerning of that. And this is the direction I'm going. And it's going to feel so empowering, so good, so boss-like. You will be so grateful, Aquarians, that you, t that you were able to tap into that energy. So, yeah, let's take a look at the guidebook for beauty or for it's waxy give us four. Waxing give us four. Beauty is like medicine. It can heal even the most broken spirit. Beauty is everywhere in nature. Just look. Beauty comes in many forms and we can choose to find it. I love how I look. Rid yourself of clutter and what you find disagreeable disagreeable and then the affirmation is I see beauty everywhere and it raises my vibration oh, this is a long message she have for beauty and she's talking about the definition of beauty but what I'm talking about here is not so much about the definition of beauty per se I'm talking about being able to see the beauty of your life, even in the midst of disappointments, even in the midst of feeling like things are not going as you hoped or planned, even in the midst of having to have like little conflicts. Your everything that you've been manifesting is beautiful. The good, the bad, the ugly, what's difficult and what's easy, what's challenging, what comes easy to you, what's um, new and shiny to what's rustic and old. All of it holds beauty and power. And once you're able to see that, you will be renewed. When things get stressful, don't just go to a place of fear. Go to a place of, you know what? There are things in my life that are beautiful. I can sit back and meditate right now. That is beauty. I can engage um, with conversation with my children that's beautiful as well in my life you know it's like redefining the experiences when things are like not going as planned not going as hoped finding the beauty in that situation despite what's happening sometimes you may not be able to find it right away but you seeking out the beauty is the gift of being able to kill two birds with one stone first 
to root out anything that may be manifesting negative stuff you don't want and to actually replace it with gratitude and manifesting more of what you want. That's that shift. So there you have it, my lovely Aquarians. Um, that's it for now. Thank you so, so much for watching. Much love and many blessings. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye. Hello, Pisces. This is your December Life, Love, and Abundance Tarot and Oracle reading. This is a monthly reading. And we're going to get right to it for December. For Pisces, what are the overall overarching energies for the month of December? Okay, guilt. Liberation. Okay, huh. spirit. We have guilt. Liberation. Contemplate. An enchantment. And what we'll do is we'll take a look at all the cards once we lay it all, all out on the table. Alright, Spirit, what will Pisces be confronting in the month of December? Or what will they need to confront in December? We have Page of Wands. Seven of Swords. Hmm. What will I see be confronting? Or what should they be confronting? Okay, we have the full card. Seven of Wands. All right. What tools will Pisces be utilizing? Okay, this one has a little nudity, so I'm just going to have the Amethyst cover them up because otherwise I'm going to do like I did with the other uh, Libra video. I had to set an age restriction because I felt guilty, like a weirdo that I am. I can feel guilty. Look, guilt. <laughs> Okay, what tools will Pisces be utilizing in the month of December? What tools? Seven of Cups, or Cauldron. Hmm. of wands mm -hmm. five of shields what's the outcome cards for Pisces for December we have strength three of wands what will we'll Pisces be leaving behind in December and taking with them into Three of Cups into January, Ace of Swords. And I'm trying to find something that will cover that up. <laughs> oh, I'm such a mom. Anyways, um, all right, not done yet with laying out the cards. What do Pisces need to surrender 
in December. Surrender to the wisdom of your body. Any other messages of surrender for Pisces in the month of December? Surrender your desire to control people. Interesting. Okay. And then finally, a closing message from Spirit to you, Pisces, tying up all the messages that we have here. Snow moon, purity. And we'll read it. I'll see if I, my intuition calls me to read an excerpt. Sometimes it doesn't, so we'll go with the flow. All right, let's go into it, Pisces. In the month of December, we show here that there's guilt, yet liberation, contemplate, and enchantment going on inside of you and around you. Guilt, you could be harboring guilt. Sorry, we're moving the tripod. You could be harboring guilt about maybe something related to your children, um, maybe you feel like you're not really there for them enough or feel like you, you're not giving your child exactly what they need or, or something. It could be guilt um, in terms of um, not really being there for your partner. It could be um, guilt that stems from something that happened in the past. It could be guilt that someone's harboring for some wrongdoing that they've done against you. So guilt is definitely an energy going on in the month of December. For some people, the guilt could come about simply because they feel like they can't give their children the kind of holidays that they really want. But really, you know, you need to, there, the liberation energy is just as prevalent um, as the guilt energies, meaning that if you don't have the means to be able to, you know, make this grand Christmas, liberate yourself from that and just say, I can give something that's way more valuable than anything I could ever buy, which is love. And that will set you free. You will realize you don't have to buy your kids everything or buy them all the latest gadgets to show love. Um, some of you... Um, could be liberated from guilt that maybe you've had um, been harboring over um, a, a failed relationship. And finally, you get some information this month where you're able to really liberate from that guilt. Um, some of you are going to be in heavy contemplation this month, really just pondering life, pondering your decisions, looking at what enchants you, what makes you happy and excited about life and going with that and going and leaning into that i'm actually called to read the purity card before normally i i read the this is a closing message but i'm called to uh take a look at the guidebook now purity it's number 30. the affirmation says i know why i do what i do Purity. Look for the simplest and cleanest solution. Understand your motives for doing what you are doing. Be as clear as possible in your communication. So again, contemplating what exactly you're doing and getting clear on that. The word purity now seems to have a kind of loaded moral quality. Anytime I mention the word, oh, I like something crawling on me. Anytime I mention the word, people mostly think about how it's used in religion. Or in morals, for example, the purity of vir virgins, the purity of no sex before marriage, the purity of celibacy, the purity, purity of bloodline of certain extreme right-wing groups. No wonder we use the word with some trepidation. The purity I refer to here is the purity of the silver moon on the unmarked snow. The simple purity of intention that nature demonstrates. The purity of clean water in a mountain stream. The purity of one single purpose. Oh, I love that. The Cambridge Dictionary defines this kind of purity as being clean or free from harmful substances. 
And I guess in our world, so full of pollution and damage to the environment, that may be well hard to find. However, the ancients looked at the cycles that brought ice and snow as a sort of reset button, a time when everything lay fallow for a while and brought with it a kind of simplicity. These times were hard, but if we were prepared for them, we would survive. There are good reasons to strive for a kind of positive purity in our lives. Being precise with our language and as clear as we can be in our communications means fewer miscommunications and misunderstandings in our relationships and work life. Keeping our intentions pure and untainted with lower energies, such as jealousy, revenge, or unworthiness, as much as possible means that our motivations are pure and not muddy in their reasoning. And the companion stone or metal to work with with this month, I would say, is the clear quartz. I love that. And the reason I wanted to read that is because I get a sense that all of your reading is going to be kind of tied into that. Surrender to the wisdom of your body. Listen to your body's messages about a person or situation. If you feel physically drained or uncomfortable, be cautious. If you feel energized and happy, move forward. So really leaning into your intuition this month, Pisces. Um, we'll just read this now and then we'll move on into the tarot. Surrender your desire to control people. Being over-controlling can sabotage relationships. To more effectively achieve your goals, back off, regroup, and give the situation some breathing room. Okay. All right, let's get into the tarot portion of the reading. So, in the, so what's happening or what you will be confronting in the month of December is we have the Page of Wands, so ushering new beginnings and creative pursuits, going after what enchants us, you know, getting clear about, you know, our passion, one, you know, one or two things to really be passionate about and say, you know what, I'm going to strike out on this new beginning. I'm going to surrender guilt about taking time away from my family to do this passion endeavor, and I'm going to go ahead and try it out and see what happens. Um, we have the Seven of swords seven of swords is an interesting card because it either could mean you feeling like you are getting in the way with something or you feel like someone is getting away um, with something on you and it's got you like in deep thought and contemplating um, this also it could tie into the liberation card where you know maybe getting away with something is also helping you to be liberated in a certain scenario or maybe um well yeah i would say so and this sitting next to the full card and in between and like anger between wands tells me this is really about you you feeling like your liberation has it's been limited. Like you have not been able to have true freedom in your life. You've been bogged down by guilt and bogged down by responsibility. And now listen to your intuition and it's time to take a leap of faith. It's time to jump into something new, a new career endeavor, a new passion pursuit, a new hobby, um, or maybe work on ones that you already have established, but jumping in and just Saying, you know what, I don't know how things are going to work out, but I'm going to try it anyway. I'm going to do it because it's ultimately going to lead me to feeling free. And that's what's important to you. Ultimately, that's like your ultimate goal. And right now you may feel like your employer's taking that away from you. Your significant other who's always constantly putting financial demands on you. It could be your children who are doing that and you feel like, oh my God, it's, it's not one thing, it's another or it could be you yourself. So you just have to be aware of that. Don't be into the self-sabotage thing. Really, if you start to get into to thought patterns that aren't so helpful, analyze them by just saying, you know what? Thank you, but I got this. And you replace it then with another thought that is a lot more in alignment with where you're trying to go. Um, we have the... Seven of song of wands. Let's say songs. Seven of wands. 
And this is about, you know, feeling like you have to defend, uh, maybe pursuing your passion pursuits or defend something that you're really passionate about in the month of December. Perhaps you're defending your decision um, to uh, celebrate a holiday and, and, you know, you have to defend that. Some of you um, will literally be defending people or things that you love um, by protesting or by, you know, exerting some... Um, exerting some free speech on somebody or exerting um you, or just dishing out what it is that you feel about a cert certain situation and so you know with that being said though you really do need to surrender your desire to control people even if you're mad you know marching even if you you know are trying to change people's minds about a certain cause or something going on in your family you still cannot control them so you just may as well not try um, tools that you will be that you can utilize here we have the lovely king of cauldrons and he is the master of his emotions so this is an invitation for you this month to listen, like this says, surrender to the wisdom of your body, your intuition, and to be like the King of Cups and really just say, you know what, I am the steward and the conductor or the or the captain here, and I am going to be a secure um, leader of this vessel of love I'm I'm moving about, and. It's a powerful way to be in this world. It's how you get to enchantment it, on a more regular and consistent basis by managing your emotions and just saying, you know what, this is a tool I'm going to tap into this month, especially with knowing how, you know, everybody can get a little bit rattled in the month of December. It's nice to know that you really do have the tools to help you navigate and just be able to keep your thoughts and your emotions as pure as possible. Keep your intentions as pure as possible because that will also help. Exploring your options. You know, if you're on the in the dating market, not just settling on the first person that comes your way because you don't want to be lonely. Really exploring your options this month. Whether you're exploring job offers, you're exploring um, offers for dates, you're exploring um, certain things you're researching. Just take your time. There's no need to rush. You could have, um, you know, days to come up with a certain decision. So just take your time and choose wisely. Um, and that's why I say it's sitting next to the choice card is what I said. Two of swords. Really having to make a decision this month you will find yourself having to make a decision and not really having all the information before you, not really knowing what to do even. You may have a situation that comes up, you know, at your kid's school, for example, and you don't know exactly which way to go yet. This card is saying that listen to your intuition, listen to your gut, because you don't have all the answers, but you still have to make a choice. So surrender to the wisdom of your body is what this is saying. When you see her blindfolded, but she still ha is in a position that she needs to make a, a decision, she's now going to have to use rely heavily on her other senses to guide her, just as you will. Um, Ace of Wands, new beginnings in creative pursuits. It's time, like I said again, just like the Page of Wands is saying that you will be doing, the tool here is saying, Go ahead, spark up some new hobbies, some new interests, um, new flirtations with people if you're single. Maybe new flirtations with your existing or your partner. But definitely stepping up and showing up for your life in terms of bringing more fire energy into it. And it starts now. It starts in December. Um, when you're feeling left out, when you're feeling put about put out and put upon and not really feeling valued and feeling like oh if I could just be right there life would be so better so much better you've got to release that attitude and just know that your life is beautiful just the way it is you we always can strive and aim to improve upon it but we're only outside of a situation because we have decided that's where we need to be. 
if you are cold outside and you see warmth or you're cold and you see warmth, go ahead and approach and say, I need some help here. I need to warm up and speak up. So in the tools position, what we have is the strength card. So you're definitely going to have to rely on your inner strength this month like never before, but you are going to be strong enough to weather the storms. And this is the energies that are going to be taking you forth into January. I think all of them, honestly. You're going to be super strong, strength of mind to really navigate and handle anything that's being thrown at you. Um, and you're going to have some things, not too major things that going on. It's mostly you, the internal struggles going on with you. And watching the purity of your thoughts, the purity of your emotions. Because if you don't, they could muddy it and you could start to manifest things you're not trying to manifest. Um, the Three of Wands shows you actually, you know, getting ready for the new year and taking steps towards pursuing your um your passion pursuits, whatever uh, goal that you had set out earlier in the month, you're now, you know, with the goals here and the new activities here, you're actually now at, that you've done that in the beginning of the month, you're now embarking on a new journey with that. And that's awesome. The three of cauldrons finds you celebrating with uh, friends and um, or relatives or even your lover just having a bonding moment in um, December. Something you've been really wanting to have with fr a close, uh, long-time friends or relatives. And now it's finally happening and it feels great. Um, and it's like reuniting. And we, you know, you're reunited. You're feeling good. And so that's some energies that's going to be lovely in December for you, where you are being enchanted. You even got three here. One, two, three. The enchanted. Yeah, oh, actually, I didn't miss one. There's four. But just being enchanted and, 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 and just in awe of your friends and your connections and, and hoping that that moment continues on, and it will. It certainly will. Ace of Swords shows that you're going to have some new ideas, some new um, suggestions being thrown at you how, on how to do something, some new uh, intuitive hits on what to do, where to go, what to release. Um, you are going to have new beginnings in terms of perhaps um, new um new arrangements, new thoughts, new, um, it could be perhaps some of you getting an offer for a job to do something a little bit more intellectual. Some of you, this card could signal having more of an intellectual bond with friends or your lover. Um, it could signify new beginnings and new thought and having, um, your passion pursuits starting to boil and, and blossom and you really, you know, just evolving here and changing and growing. Um, even just within this month, there's a lot of growth happening here because there's a lot of contemplation happening on your part. You paying attention to your thoughts and when you see that there's negative thought patterns, you root them out. That is a new idea. That is a new way of manifesting that you had not really explored before now. You may have dibbled and dabbled in trying to clear up and not muddy your thoughts and you try to keep a positive attitude, but things just didn't quite stick. This month in December, maybe it's because you're going into the new year, new year, things do stick. Things do um, make sense for you and you are excitedly going into the new year with some strength and conviction about yourself which is powerful. I mean, we've got the strength card to the conviction card, the ace of swords, the I know where I'm going and I this is a new beginning I'm embarking on, but I'm ready for it. I'm ready for this challenge is how I feel you're, you're taking it on. But initially, you may have had some trepidation over that, but now towards the end of the month, I see you saying, no, bring it on. Bring on whatever life has to throw at me. 
All right, my lovely Pisces, thank you so, so much for watching. It's been such a pleasure doing this reading for you. Much love, many blessings. Bye.